Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome to our channel. In our latest video, we talked about the basics of JMeter architectural elements. It is very important to have a basic understanding of those elements before starting to use the JMeter user interface. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will do a quick tour of the JMeter user interface. The Apache JMeter user interface contains various components and sections that facilitate the creation, configuration and execution of performance tests. It is always advisable to familiarize yourself with the interface before diving into performance testing tasks. This principle applies not only to JMeter but also to other tools you use in your daily tasks. So without any further delay, let's get started. First, let's try to open the JMeter. JMeter can be opened in two ways, graphical user interface mode and non-graphical user interface mode. First, let's start with the graphical user interface mode and then we will see the option to open it in the non-graphical user interface mode as well. Okay. So to open the JMeter in GUI mode, go to the folder where you have downloaded the JMeter. I have downloaded it in softwares folder. So in Apache JMeter, go to the bin folder where we have all the different executables. If you are using Windows, then you can open the JMeter.bat file. If you are using Linux or Mac system, then you can use the JMeter.sh. So in my case, I'm using Mac. So I will be opening the JMeter.sh. Irrespective of the file, it will open the same interface. Okay. So let's open the JMeter. So when you open the JMeter, it will open two things. One, the terminal window and the other one is the actual user interface. So let's quickly go to the terminal window and try to understand one important thing. So in terminal, we can see this message like don't use GUI mode for load testing only for test creation and test debugging. That means JMeter is recommending us not to use GUI mode for load testing. We should only use GUI mode for test creation or test debugging. Okay. For actual load test, like if you are testing your script with hundreds or thousands of users, then you should always use the non GUI mode. This is also called as CLI mode, nothing but command line interface mode. So to open the JMeter in non GUI mode, you should be using this particular command. So you should type JMeter in the terminal under bin folder. And then there are two options hyphen N and hyphen T. After that, you should specify the JMX file. So whatever the files that we are creating in JMeter will be saved with the .jmx extension. So you should specify that specific file path here. And then after that hyphen L and the results file, wherever you want to store the results, you should be giving that results file path here. Okay. So this is the way we can open the JMeter in non GUI mode. Since we are at very beginning stage, we will try to open the JMeter in GUI mode and learn all the concept. Once we start the distributed testing concepts, then we'll try to deep dive this particular command. Okay. For now, just remember that JMeter can be opened in two modes, GUI mode and non-GUI mode. So whatever the way going to bin directory and opening the .bat or .sh file is a GUI mode. Okay. Don't close this terminal window and it will be closed automatically when you close the JMeter. So this is the JMeter user interface looks like. If you are planning to do performance testing using JMeter, then you will be spending most of your time in this interface. So let's try to understand different options available in this user interface. So we have a menu bar and then we have a toolbar. On the left hand side, we have an elements pane. On the right hand side, we have the configuration properties pane. First, let's start with the menu bar to understand the different options available for us in JMeter. Basically, menu bar contains set of menus, each offering a list of options or commands. So let's start with the file first. So in file, we have new. This option will be used to create a new JMeter file. And then we we have a template. If you want to create a JMeter file using the existing templates, then you can select this templates option. When we were discussing about the folder structure, I have shown you the template folder and which contains some sample templates, right? So this option will refer those templates. So when we click the templates, it will show the list of available templates for us. So we can build the test script using these templates. For example, if you are creating a test script for your web application, you can use this building a web test plan template to create that. So it will create a structure for you and then you can make modification to the template according to your requirement and then open if you want to open the existing JMeter file you can use the open option here and if you already open some files those will be stored in recent so you can quickly navigate those files from open recent option and we have merge option available here to merge the existing script with the some other script and there are options available to save the JMeter files and if you want to restart the JMeter then you can also do that from file menu restart up once you click this restart then the JMeter will be restarted and we have edit option Options. In the edit menu, some of the options are dynamic. Like if you are selecting any particular element or if you are creating some element, these options may look little different. Since I haven't created anything, so I have an option here to add elements. So I can select whatever the element that I want from here and then add it to the test plan. And then I have a paste option. If I have copied something, then I can also paste it here. And then options to open, merge and save the JMeter scripts. And we have an option called
called copy code here in the edit menu. Let's park this option for now and we'll come back to the option at a later stage. And then again, we have some save options available here to save the JMeter script as an image or screen. And then enable disable options, which are applicable to the elements. If you want to enable any specific element or disable any element, you can use the either enable or disable. So some situations when we are troubleshooting the script, we don't want all the elements to be executed. In such situation, we can use disable option to disable that element instead of removing it from the script so that JMeter will not execute that particular element. And we have an option toggle, which will either enable or disable. For example, if the element is enabled, then it will disable it. And if the element is disabled, then it will try to enable it. We have help option to get some JMeter help from here. And then we also have search options to search for some specific elements in the tree. And also if you want to replace that element with something, then you can also do that here. And we have a run menu, which have an options to start the test and also stop the test. So for start test also, we have two options, one with just start and then another one with start no pauses. The difference between start and start no pauses is in your script, if you have timer elements and if you are selecting start, then it will try to pause the script based on the configuration that you defined in the timer element. Whereas if you select start no pauses, then JMeter will not pause that. JMeter will simply ignore that timer element configuration and then execute all the other elements. We have an option called stop and shut down. The main difference between stop and shutdown is both will try to stop the test scripts, but the stop option will abruptly stop the test scripts, whereas the shutdown will gracefully shut down all the threads. For example, if the thread is in middle of some action, when you select the shutdown option, the JMeter will allow the thread to complete the rest of the action and then stop it. Whereas if you select the stop option, then JMeter forcefully stop that thread there itself. And we have some options available, remote start, remote start all, stop and stop all, shutdown and shutdown all. So these are all options used when we are doing the distributed testing. So in distributed testing, we will be using different load generators to simulate the load onto the applications. In that scenario, we will use this remote start to start all those nodes. And if you want to stop, then we can also stop those from here. Okay. And then we have clear and clear all. This will clear the results so that can have a fresh copy of the test execution results. And in options, we have look and feel options where you can change the theme of the JMeter user interface. Right now I have selected as a metal. If we selected something else, then it will show that particular theme. You can go through the different look and feel options available and see which one you like it most. And then you can keep that option. And we have an option called log viewer, which will show all the JMeter logs. So when you select that log viewer, it will show all the different logs. So these logs will be helpful to us whenever we are trying to troubleshoot some issues. And then we can also set the log level. By default, it is info level if you want to change it to debug to get more in detail logs. So you can select this option. If you don't want to have any logs, then you can also turn off. Okay. We have SSL manager option. Basically, JMeter has out of box support for SSL and TLS client authentication but for your application if there is a different client certificates that needs to be used then using this SSL manager option you can configure the client certificates which are in .jks format so that the test will use them for authentication purposes okay we have an option to change the UI language to something else. So these are the current language that JMeter supports. If you want to change the UI language to one of these language, you can choose this option to do so. Okay. And then if you created so many elements, if you want to collapse them all, you can use this collapse all option. And then same thing, if you want to expand all those elements, then you can use the expand all option as well. You can zoom into the screen and zoom out to the screen using these options. And if you want to save the script automatically before every run, then you can select this option. In tools menu, we have a couple of options for creating heap dump and thread dump. These are generally used for debugging purposes. And then we also have function helper dialog. So let's say in your script, you are trying to make use of some default inbuilt JMeter functions. You don't know the syntax of that function. You can come to this helper dialog and then look for that specific function and, and understand the syntax. And if you want to export your transactions for reporting purpose, you can also do that from here. And if you want to generate a HTML report, you can select the generate HTML report option. And then we have a compile JSR223 test elements option, which will compile the JSR223 elements before actually the scripts runs. And then you can also import from curl. Curl is a Linux command. Generally, we use curl to do the connectivity or to retrieve some response for a request. So if you have such command, you can import that using this option so that JMeter will create a script for you. Okay. And then help. Help basically used to go through the documentation of JMeter. For example, if you go to about 
about Apache JMeter, which will tell about the JMeter and the version that currently installed and also provides a link to the release notes of this version. So you can go through that and then understand what are all the different fixes that we have with this version. And there are some useful links that you can use it. For example, while using JMeter, if you find an issue and you want to report it to the development team, then you can create an issue from here. So developers can investigate and then fix it in the future releases. So these are all different options available in Minubar. And the next one toolbar basically toolbar is another graphical element it consists of different icons and buttons that represent frequently used actions so these are all different frequently used actions by jmeter users so the first one is creating a jmeter file this is nothing but file new option and if you want to create a jmeter script using some inbuilt templates you can use this option and if you want to open an existing jmeter script you can use this option this is for save cut copy paste and also expand all and collapse all and this is for start and start no pauses and also we have option here to stop and shut down so these are all quick options for you to use it instead of going to menu and then look for that option for example if you want to run the jmeter scripts you can simply run this button instead of going to run and then selecting the start option okay and then we also have clear options search we have function helper dialog and then also help option on the right hand side we can see the time so this is the elapsed time like when you run the script it will show you how long it took to complete that script and then the second shows the number of errors in the logs for example when you run the script if it contains some errors here we can see how many errors are there so when you click this it will open the log viewer if it is already open then it will close that for example see when i click this it closed that log viewer if you click that again it will open the log viewer so the last option is the thread so let's say if you are running 10 threads this option will show how many are running versus how many total number of threads to run and then we have the element pan where we can add the elements remove the elements right so by default when you open the script jmeter will create a test plan element for us so we can start building other elements using this test plan on the right hand side we can see the configuration properties of the selected element since we have selected test plan it is showing up the configuration properties of that test plan element okay so if you want to add a new element to this test plan you just need to right click add and then it will show you all the available elements you can select the appropriate one for example i want to add a thread group to this test plan so i can go to the thread and then select the thread group so that will add the thread group element to this test plan since we, i have selected the thread group on the right hand side i can see different configuration properties of that thread group okay and let's say i want to add a sampler so i can select the thread group sampler and then select the appropriate one so i want to add http request sampler so i can select the http request that will add the http request sampler to this thread group so whenever we are adding the elements jmeter creates the elements in a tree hierarchy so the top level or root element is a test plan and for the test plan we have a child element thread group because we have created this element by selecting the test plan right so the thread group is child element for the thread group test plan is the parent element whereas we have added http request by selecting the thread group so for http request thread group is the parent and for thread group http request is the child element so you need to understand this parent and child hierarchy whenever you are adding the elements so that will determine the scope of that element so make sure that you are adding the child elements to the respective parent element so if you want to remove the element you just need to right click again and then select the remove options so before removing it will ask us the confirmation so you can select yes so that will remove the element let's add a couple of elements again http request and then let's add the listener to listener and then view registry so these two are child to thread group right so let's select test plan and then add listener view result so for this view results tree the parent element is test plan because we have added this element by selecting the test plan and this view results tree parent is thread group so if i collapse all so there are two childs for this test plan thread group and view results tree i hope you understand the parent and child hierarchy now when you right click by selecting any element jmeter will show you a quick shortcut menu with different options so you can pick and choose the option based on your requirement okay and these are all pretty much same option that we have seen in the menu bar so in the edit option we have an option called copy code i told you that i will show it in the later stage so let's select the test plan and then go to edit and then copy code open visual studio code select new text file and then paste that code so this is the code that we need to write in case if you want to develop the script using the code 
JMeter has that option, you know, to generate this code snippet for us. So we can also understand how JMeter is writing the code for the elements that we are adding in the UI. For our discussions purpose, we mostly add the elements using the interface only. Okay. In the upcoming videos, we will try to go through the different architectural elements in depth and try to understand the different configuration properties available for that element. Okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for staying till the end and supporting me. I hope you understand the different components of JMeter user interface interface explained in this video. In case anything is not clear or required more detailed information, please feel free to mention it in the comment section. All the video notes have been uploaded in GitHub and you can find the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited. I'll see you with the next video in this module. Until then, take care, stay safe and keep learning.